Hello everybody, Dr. Alex Vasquez here and I'm doing a quick and casual uh, conversational recording so to speak on this topic of mitochondrial dysfunction specifically as related to the recent conversations uh, that I've been posting about uh, melatonin. So uh, I've been wanting to you know finish this up for a while and I haven't had the perfect opportunity to do so, and it looks like I'm not going to have the perfect opportunity for a while, which is why I'm doing this right now. I'm not necessarily saying this video is going to be the final version of this conversation, but uh, it's, it's what I'm going to do right now in order to bring some closure to my offering uh, to do this, which, which has now been public for you know a couple of weeks or something like that. So I want to go ahead and do this video real quick. Because, uh, I, like I said in the Substack posts, uh, I had been interested in melatonin recently, starting last year. I mean, I've always been interested. I've been using melatonin personally and professionally for about 25 years. And my introduction to melatonin was in naturopathic medical school in approximately 1998. Uh, under the instruction of a legitimate professor with decades of uh, clinical experience and expertise. Uh, very few of you might know who he is, uh, or and some of you would also know who, his, who he worked for uh, in, in some capacity. So the professor I'm referring to is, his name's Davis Lamson, and he worked at the Tahoma Clinic uh, with uh, Jonathan V. Wright. So you may not know who Davis Lamson is. He's written a few uh, a few articles, maybe even some books, I don't know, but for sure some, uh, some articles. Uh, and if you've been in the nutrition world and you haven't heard of Jonathan V. Wright, then you, you're not really, I have to say, you're, you're not too deep into nutrition if you don't know who he is. So uh, you can use those however you want, but those are kind of barometers for where you are with nutrition. Uh, and it doesn't doesn't depend on, you know, age or time. Uh, Jonathan Wright's work, just like with his colleague, uh, Alan Gaby, I mean, you, you have to know their work if you know nutrition. So, again, uh, my introduction to melatonin was under Davis Lamson at Bastyr University uh, in our oncology course. So he was the professor we had to learn how to treat cancer. Very interestingly, you know, in my experience, which is obviously, you know, unique to me, but is not unique per se, uh, you know, in, in naturopathic school, naturopathic medical school, you know, we had courses in gynecology and obstetrics, for example, in, you know, so-called legitimate uh, allopath, well, allopathic osteopathic medical school, we didn't have a class in gynecology. Uh, in naturopathic school, we had a class in obstetrics, but in medical school, uh, we actually delivered babies, uh, even though I would say very clearly that we didn't have any idea what we were doing. You know, like, you know who taught me how to deliver babies uh, or catch babies? Uh, like a, a classmate of mine who had just learned how to do it like the day before. So it's not like my instruction in catching babies was anything, uh, you know, of high quality. I mean, we learned, we learned, and this is, this is true of medical training. I mean, we just learned by watching other people do it and then trying to not make mistakes. Uh, as you probably could anticipate, I actually prefer learning in a classroom and then doing it in real life, not just jumping into doing it in real life where nobody knows what the hell they're doing, they have no criteria, they, and they just wing it, and they call that, you know, medical care. I don't think that's a good way to do medical education or medical care. So uh, that's my opinion on obstetrics and gynecology, and it would be my opinion on everything else too. I mean, to not, to not teach people how to do things and then throw them into a situation where they have to fake it just creates uh, chaos and it creates really sloppy healthcare. So, so that's the outline, glycolysis, pyruvate dehydrogenase, starting to feed into the Krebs cycle with some other substrates here. And then we have, 
you know, the big ATP coup de gras right here, uh, which is the electron transport chain. So that's the overview, but these are the actual details of every enzyme and every substrate involved in that uh, pathway. And as I started to say, these were my study notes. Uh, that was when I first made this diagram, was in medical school. And what I did is I, I drew everything out, as you can see here, and then I went back and I made a separate version where I took all the letters out, I took all the words out, and so all I had was the arrows. And then my way of studying this was to go back and fill in all the blanks, so to speak, for every arrow. So I had this entire document, this entire diagram memorized. Every single enzyme, every single reaction, every single ATP, every single substrate, all through the Krebs cycle. I mean, I know some medical students, all they did is memorize the Krebs cycle. I mean, for me, that's nothing. I could do that in an afternoon. But in our school, we had to memorize everything all the way. And that's how I kind of gained some mastery over, you know, mitochondrial function, so to speak. And obviously from there, I went on to write, you know, some articles and books on it.